Hello guys, good morning again. Um, this is Mimela Kacia. Uh, we are continuing our uh, sessions, our lectures regarding uh, calculation, how to technical calculation, how to build right uh, way to calculate position. And this time I prepare for you a position from the game uh, between two grandmasters, Arneson and Miles. So why dealing with a uh, really hard choice, kind of difficult choice? Uh, they have a hanging fish up here. They have a hanging rook here. They're down the pawn. So clearly they have to make a choice between playing rook g3 or g2. Make some kind of check and same division. Or maybe to go to g5. What if we imagine uh, White had about, let's say, 15 minutes on the clock to make a decision? In fact, it was moved to the, uh, to the six. We're not sure how much time a white opponent had on their club. Uh, but I'm sure they didn't have that much time. But anyway, let's talk about making decisions. All right? So let's try to understand what's the right way to us to think, to make a move. Well, clearly, when this is the wild type position and you also have this discovery attack, I guess one thing you have to clearly understand, okay, where are we? Are we winning or are we losing? Any time when you have this kind of situation, I always suggest to my students, first find a draw. If you find a draw, then go ahead and try to find a win. All right, that's the first advice, first tip. Second tip, if this is wild type position, then I guess we first responsible to cover ourselves against most force line. Let's see what's going on with this double check. All right. I guess white, black, king must take, obviously. Check. Uh, I think it's only check because this uh, straight check doesn't work. We have a simple cover. We're losing. So I guess that's the only check. And it looks like uh, if black king comes closer, then I can keep checking him. So he's trying to retrieve. And what we noticed, if black king steps on this line, then I have to deal with this. But also, we must notice, these guys also don't want to lie. So what if Black King tried to run, and they will capture, followed by Rook G8? Should I continue this line to calculate, or should I simply close this file and say, hey, this is bad, and I'm going to play something else? What's the right, what's the wrong? I'm sure White had to reach this position. I'm sure. They reached. And I'm sure what they might fail is, again, this is my, you know, I'm assuming, all right? They might see this way. They thought if they took by ED, then these two pawns kind of, two passers probably lose. If they take by CD, then after this, Right? If you play b3, then black wins by force because these two pawns are running to the queen and this guy able to defend those two pawns. If you play, if you not play b3, then after c4, black control all possible entrances, right? And then black's plan will be very simple. My king will run to d6, defend that, play f5, break through, win this guy. And these two passers won the game. So I guess uh, White actually figured out those things and kind of said to themselves, hey, I'm going to stop this. This is bad. And I don't have much time on my clock. So I'm going to play something else. And they, play, they choose to play rook g3 because they thought, okay, I'm going to cover this. And I'm going to save my bishop and cover that. And it looks okay. You know, if this queen goes somewhere, I might jump here. And I guess I'm pretty much sure they didn't have much time to make a decision. Like I said, maybe 10, maybe 15 minutes. Averaging for the last four to five moves. But what they made a mistake, after queen c8, Simply, queen controls all possible entrance for white queen to be. 
And then Black has actually a very simple plan to improve. I mean, it's a really simple plan. They want to play here. They want to play here. Line up a piece on the, I mean, on the H file and simply Q Y. I guess uh, why try their best to kind of, you know, create those uh, tricks here. But after this, step by step, they lost the game. So what it means? What's going on? Uh, was the last, I mean, first position hopeless? So why didn't have a chance uh, to use this, this cover attack? No. What, why why lost the game? They made the wrong decision at the beginning. Because they're supposed to understand this way. You know, if I move my rook somewhere, somewhere, I'm simply down the pawn. You know, a role of my bishop here is just to defend this file, nothing else, because his productivity is zero, right? And this is a bad position for me to play. So speaking practically, even without seeing what's going on in this pawn endgame, you have to make this decision and go for it. And maybe, maybe you're missing something from the beginning. Maybe you missed something. Because at least here, there is some hopes. There is some hopes. And what actually White missed in this case. All right, let's do this. What White missed in this case, it's move ED. Well, CD was clearly bad. You can't give up two flanks. It's better for you to deal with one flank only. And now it's actually very, uh, I'm not sure exactly the name. I have seen this uh, kind of endgame studies uh, from many, uh, I think from a couple at least, uh, composers. But I believe uh, this rule uh, I saw uh, from the uh, compositions of um, Grigoriev, uh, from Grigoriev, Russian composer. And I think the rule is this. Anytime when uh, two connected passers deal uh, with defended passers, the only way connect passer will win the game if defended passer not cross the middle. So basically speaking, if my defended passer on the fifth rank and I have only three squares to reach to reach a queen to propose my pawn, I don't think so. Black actually has a chance to win the game. So this is the failure of Grandmaster, not just calculation. It's also fair, but not knowing, like, you know, um, known, very well known positions. If he will knew that rule, kind of, if he will knew that uh, endgame study, then I guess his decision uh, will be easy to make. But now let's double check. Let's double check ourselves because I'm going to show you another important rule. So let's say, we play here. Obviously, this part cannot be calculated from the beginning, but we can we can try to play this. And I'm suggesting you guys to play this as well, just to practice. So let's say we stand, we we go, we play. I mean, this kind of move doesn't really matter, right? We play, and um, okay, Black King could be reaching f uh, f6g5 square. Uh, black could play right away f4, again, doesn't really matter because we're still going to get similar position. Uh, we still have this. And pretty much by force, we, we're reaching this position. Now, what's the rule? So you stay, you don't give up space yet, right? And now, uh, for, for white, uh, for black, they have to make a decision. So best they can always play f3. It's it's very important because is this. It's I call this like uh, principles of shouldering. Um, let me explain to you why. Like if pawn on d5, uh, let's say from white's perspective, if you put the uh, board, let's say uh, from white side, or it doesn't matter. Let's say you put your board on the black side. Doesn't matter. So right now I'm looking at the screen and I have a left side my pawn on the left and the black pawn to the right. So I'm trying to keep uh, 
as most advanced pawn, right? In this case, I'm trying to keep the farthest pawn. So it means if this is the left side, right? This is the right side. This is the right side. Then this guy is far away from the d5 pawn, and I must advance f3 pawn, f pawn. So f3 is the best practical chance. Then the rule is after, let's say, f3 move, when you stand, when you go back, finally, white and black king must make a progress. Otherwise, there is no way you can, you know, you can uh, uh, push your pawns, right? And after king f4, the next rule you have to know, it's always keeping your king on the same line as enemy's king. That's the only move for you to keep balance, to draw this game. Otherwise, you white will lose this. It's a very important rule. And now, the problem is, if you play f3, f2, you can say, oh my gosh, this, this, I'm done, and win. No, it's wrong. This, this, and win. But the problem is, white can play smaller. King g2. And now, black actually lost. So this shouldering is also very important, because I control all the square, and that's it. Done. So you can't do that. You can't do that, and your only way is to play right away here. You must play e2. And I believe it's a drawish. I believe it's a drawish type positions because uh, at the time when black queen will take my pawn, I think uh, white queen will simply have uh, so many so many checks, and I think it's going to be a perpetual check, and it's going to be draw. If we go back here, and let's say uh, we will consider to play uh, this, right? Or it could happen from different orders. Uh, actually, no, not here. Uh, not here. Uh, it should be this way then. It should be here. Uh, let's say, yeah, let's say this way. If I'm playing this, I'm playing that, and this. This is wrong for black because that's why it's important for them to always push the farthest pawn. Because in this case, uh, again, I'm going to keep my king on the same line. And now, same problem. If you play e2, then after this, black lost. Same thing, shouldering. And if you play here, then your problem is I have a check. Basically, uh, d7, this, 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 and you lost. That's why the rule for black it's also important to always push uh, your f pawn. Your f pawn must be pushed here. Again, you can play this end game many, many times. You can try to check this end game many, many times. You can keep your, let's say, situations like this and uh, try to improve, uh, you know, your king first. But again, doesn't doesn't matter. You still, I'm st you're still going to start to push your pawns. You're still going to start to push your pawns, and when you will push your pawns, you still will have these situations, and here you still will have to make a decision. So I guess that every time it will transpose this, and again, the rule is very simple. At the time when black pawn will reach, uh, will reach uh, sixth rank, or in this case is going to be third rank. Right? I'm sorry. Yeah. You have to keep your king on the same line as enemy's king. All right. So why white fail in this game? Again, clearly because they make wrong, let's say, <clears throat> wrong decision at the beginning of this game. They use principle of elimination, but they eliminate wrong line. So important to you guys to understand this. It's really important. Again, I call it sometimes actual desperation because I would never uh, seriously consider to play rook g3 because I would understand, okay, that type position down the pawn is not good. But at least in this endgame, maybe I'm missing something. 
maybe I don't see something. And that's what exactly happening in this, uh, uh, in this end game, in this game. All right, guys, I hope you understood. I hope you like it. Uh, if any questions, always welcome to uh, get back to me and ask me anything, um, anything unclear. All right, have a great day and talk to you soon.